is one of the most difficult beers in terms of cleanup. As you can see, we've got all this in the tank that we've got to scrape off the sides of the walls. Not really a fun job. Much of it is the krausen that kind of blew out. As you can see, this is where it burst through the seal here. So we're gonna to have to replace the seals on this tank as well. Not a massive job, it's only kind of a pound's worth of neoprene foam, which shouldn't be a problem, but that's one of many jobs that we're going to do today. One of the other jobs is to uh, fire up the canning machine yet again. We're going to put some proof of concept in can and then that should complete, I think, half a dozen different styles of beer that we'll have in can, which are going to go on the website in the second week of October. And at the same time as that, the slide on wire canopy that you just saw in the brewery, in the beer garden there, that's gonna to have to come down because from next week we're having a marquee installed. So this here is a batch of the vacant gesture and we're about to mash in. As you can see, we've got the strike water coming in from the bottom of the mash tun at the minute. And uh, we're about to get mixing that bad boy. Oh, I can smell it already, it smells grand. And then over here we've just got a little bit of water in a bucket just to alter the temperature. I prefer to bring the temperature down because I, I struggle to bring it up. So what we tend to do is mash in a little bit on the high side. I'm at 79 degrees. We're shooting for, I believe, 65. So it'll end up about 67, 68, and then we just pop a bit of cold water in to accommodate that. So I've knocked the canning on the head today because we could do with an extra day for the uh, proof to settle in the tanks. We roused the hops yesterday and it's still a little bit murky. I'd rather not put all that into can, to be fair. But what I have got to do now is take down these canopies that we put up last year. Uh, firstly, so they can put the marquee up. Secondly, to repair them because some 200 pound gorilla got hold of that end of it thought it would be a good idea to pull it out instead of using the uh, the guy ropes and yeah of course if they're anchored there's a little anchoring thing there look if they're anchored in the wall then they aren't coming out are they the donkey right this is a little bit more difficult than I thought. I was probably ready for some new screws in there as well. Looking at that, let's just give this a bit of slack. It's because I've melted the end of the uh, line there, as you can see. And I'm doing it one-handed whilst filming a video. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Ah, but anyway, you get the drift. So these are going to come down. Fortunately, I put them on these hooks, so that's easy enough. We can just unlock everything, take it down, and then there are a couple of turnbuckles on the other side of the wall there. We'll just loosen them off, and a couple of screws on the wires, and they should just come down easy. Much easier to take them down now that there's no um, 
flower bed there, obviously it's all it's all patio. So they're down. The canopies are in the storeroom. I've undone the turnbuckles on this side and here we can see the ropes, the wire ropes hanging down. Could even inspect the quality of these if we liked. And I think they are of good quality actually. If we can get the old uh, phone to focus a little bit, there we go. It don't want to, does it? So anyway, as you can see, the wire ropes seem to be in good nick. So I'll just take them down. There's no rust on them or anything. I thought they might have had the uh, galve taken off of them with the um, canopy sliding back and forth over the past year or so, but these have got decades left in them yet. So we'll be taking them down, popping them into store as well. And then I'm wondering if they've got to come down to make way for the marquee, which should be going up on Tuesday. I'm sure I've said that. So there's the brewery. We've just dropped the mosaic into the boil kettle for the 30 minutes deep at 80 degrees. And I've come upstairs to the computer to uh, save some yeast strain info on the phone. These are the yeast that I picked up. I was going to put these in uh, some 4-4 can beers. Um, but I'm not sure anymore because I want to just brew everything on the big kit because of those plastic fermenters I've been using. I don't like them. So what I might do is later on in the week I think I've got a best bitter uh, planned. Let's just have a look. Yeah, there we go. So up here we've got a best bitter planned. What I might do is pull off uh, 40 litres or so of the wort and actually use that to make a yeast starter so we can up the uh, cell count of these liquid yeasts that I picked up the other week. Uh, the Kvik, this Sanders one for New England IPA. Looks interesting, but so does this one. If it has flavours of tangerine, pineapple and mango, I might put something in there then with the mosaic. And we'll see if we can do some type of uh, mosaic beer. Uh, maybe an IPA style or a pale ale style, as it says just near my thumbo there. And uh, make something interesting, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, then also... I've been playing around with pump clips, so what I'm looking to do at the minute is get some pump clips printed by uh, the company that I use for this kind of stuff, Discount Sticker Printing. They're an online based firm and basically uh, what I've been doing is getting hold of the old uh, pump clips and then taking my new can labels and changing them over so all the artwork for instance as you can see there's the there's the new can labels so all the artworks got a similar theme running through it I could really do with going on to pump clips there look on the old pump clips and we want to be pulling out essentially we need to do a coconut, so let's open this up on GIMP. Uh, actually, I don't need to do that one, do I? Because we've already got a new design for the coconut, but what we do need to do is a new design for the stout. So here it is. That looks like an old one. Oh, hello. I'm going to have to find it because I've mixed everything back up. But you get the drift. So that's my job for the next half an hour while we wait for the beer to have it steep. And then it'll be another half an hour for a transfer, I believe. And we've made it home to the dog with the longest tongue. That's Reggie boy. <laughs> oh. 
buddy. Oh, poochie pooch. Oh, did you miss me all day long? Yes, you did. Where's Chance? <whistles> Hello, bud. Hello, oh, he's gone. So there we here again have it, folks. So, a uh, little bit of overspill from the um, pub. Bit of belly pork. Oh my goodness, that's going to go in the oven. And uh, one more thing to say goodbye at the end of the vlog. Check this out. Your filth. Okay, one handed. Hold on. Did it. These are the very first cans that we made. Oh, you little beauty. I'm telling you, I'm going to struggle to do this one handed though, aren't I? So let me prop this up against the iron. Gemma's favourite tool in the house. Oh my goodness. Oh, and the strangest angle to film Pouring a Beer Award goes to. Look how clear that is. That looks really good. Right, we've got a bit of headage happening. So to avoid pulling any of the hot residue in there, folks. Oh, that looks tidy, that does. All I'd like to say is cheers. Looking forward to the 10th of October when this kind of tackle makes its way back onto Harrisonsboro.com. See you on the next one, boys and girls. Thank you very much.